the channel. My name is Adam Smith, and today I'm excited to continue my playthrough and the showcase for Masters of the Universe, the board game from Come On Games. This is currently back for a reprint on GameFound. If you want to find a link to the campaign, it's in the pinned comment and video description. And if you haven't checked out what I've released for the showcase so far, you're going to want to do that. The first video was the game unboxing for the core box. Then I did a how to set up video showing you how to get this game to the table if you're playing solo. This is the rescue scenario, the very first one from the core box, which is solo playable and then we went through part number one to show you the game in action how it flows and operates and now we're ready to really dig in and see if we can pull off a win in order to win the rescue scenario there's two things i need to do i need to collect all four of the scenario tokens i've got one of them right here found it in the rune where he-man is up there there's more in these other runes around the game board and when i flip this one over to its opposite side it unfortunately was not the artwork i was looking for when i do find a specific type of artwork which you will see when i find it it's going to be the npc we're going to draw an npc and then that npc needs to get from wherever it is whether it's here here or here because there's only three remaining spots spots it could be and we need to bring it back to this player spawn area. Now this all sounds possible, but the way we can lose the game is if our characters are KO'd for the third time, that results in a scenario loss. And also, the NPC, as a special rule, can actually be attacked during this scenario, which is not normal typically, but it can be attacked and if the NPC is KO'd, we lose right away. Now I do have one correction from the prior video which I want to point out. Every single time that you gain a skill as a result of the escalation track moving up to a spot with color, so for instance when we were beginning this whole thing off at zero and we went to one, we should have at that point in time not only selected a green skill but also gained a power at that time as well. We ended off part number one's gameplay at the end of a round, so starting a brand new round, we need to go ahead and shuffle the character activation deck, which I've done in the top right, as well as the strategy activation decks to get them going again. But we do not add this one back into the strategy activation deck just yet, because it is an ongoing effect that is only discarded once we hit the next AI strategy activation, then it will be discarded. One other minor correction is you'll remember at the tail end of part number one, Triclops came back into the fray, and when it does, you need to make sure to send the character HP token back to its starting health. No gameplay impact, but just worth mentioning, don't forget to do it. All right, I've gone ahead and set all the controller cards. Again, have no idea the order for the enemies are all face down. For our heroes, I selected to have Orko go first both times in a row, and then He-Man both times after that. The first card revealed doesn't gain any power, but it is Triclops, so we're gonna go ahead and grab a character activation. Triclops ended up with an empowered skill, giving him three additional power for a total of nine power. We go to do the very first action on the card, and it's this one right here, which says the character, if it has enough power, which nine is certainly a lot, to activate their skill and their enemies in range, they'll do so. Is there enemy in range? Yes, it is, because Triclops is using what's known as Disc Division, which is a blast, and it's gonna target the closest enemy, regardless of range or line of sight. So it no longer has to abide by the four space range rule, which means it can now actually target poor Orko. So the three power I just gained on Triclops goes away as I'm using it to spend it for this Disc Division Blast. It's going to target Triclops, unfortunately, performing a six ranged attack on him. Now also don't forget about this strategy activation card that's ongoing. It's another Empower card. These ones seem to be the popular ones popping up right now. But this one says anytime an AI character attacks, they'll gain plus one attack die and the controller will pay two power in order to make this happen. Now here's the kicker though. The game states in the rulebook that you cannot have more than six dice on attack. And this attack that's going to happen already has six dice. So the controller is not going to pay the energy to get a die that's not going to be used. Long story short, this will probably still hurt, so let's see how this goes. We got ourselves. wow, that actually worked out really good in our favor, only two ranged results. Orko, my friend, you are extremely lucky. You should have most likely been taken out by that attack, but somehow held on. Unfortunately, that's just the first action for the AI character. There is another one coming, and the same attack will be made because Triclops has six power to spend, so it can trigger the skill once again, which it will do. And this, my friends, is going to result in the KO unless for some crazy reason I roll all swords, which I highly, highly doubt is going to happen. Let's go ahead and roll these dice and see how we do. Come on, swords, give me six of them. Almost, almost, but not quite. Triclops also gets a power from the castle that he rolled, and we're going to do some damage to poor Orko, and he's going to be taken out. The second blast of Disc Division was too much for Orko to handle. His miniatures were moved off the game board. His HP marker is in the KO spot. And we also have to escalate things on the escalation track as a result of this knockout. 
HP token's been dealt with, and the Escalation track is going up by one, and that's going to unlock the yellow skill. Now, as is the case with any character KO in the game, you retain all your power. The power stays. It might feel like you should dump all your power away, but you actually get to keep it. The only thing that goes is conditions and statuses. Now let's pick our yellow skill card. We're also going to remember this time to take an additional power, which I'll do that right now. And we'll just add it right here. And we'll slot it in in a second. This one here states teleport. It says two power, and it's going to count as an action. You can target one space within four spaces of Orko, then place Orko and or any allies within four spaces of him into that space or any adjacent spaces. So this is going to allow you to get around nicely. The opposite side skill is called Dazzle. This one is an action and costs one power. You can target one space within four spaces and all enemies within two spaces of that targeted space become dazed. So it allows you to just daze a bunch of people, which is kind of cool. And then this one can be Surge for an additional power. And then this becomes a bonus activation, which means it can be done once, but it's free. It doesn't count towards your two regular actions as it would if you didn't go ahead and surge this. This was a tough decision. I decided to go with teleport because, well, we need to get to those scenario tokens. We need to be able to move people quite quickly, and this could really help with that. It's not going to help with removing armor like the day's side is going to do. And the other con to this side, which is kind of nasty, is that it will cost one of the two actions I get on an activation for this character, but I think this teleport thing could come in real handy. Something to clarify about the power that you gain is that it has to go on the new skill you acquired. It cannot be placed elsewhere. So there it is. And just to make remembering the KOs specific to the heroes easier, I'll just use a 10-sided die in the corner here. We'll set it to 1. If we see this tick to 3, we lose. Now let's select He-Man's yellow skill. We have Deflect. This one for 1 power. Defense bonus. Roll all 3 dice. For each power sword, gain an armor. For each castle, gain another armor. And the attacker suffers a wound. The opposite side is called Earth Shatter, and this one is a four dice roll for melee, and it says target one space within two spaces of He-Man. This attack hits all enemies in a line between He-Man and the targeted space. You can attack boost this a couple times with two different ones. One says target a space within four spaces of He-Man instead, and the other one says enemies in these spaces become dazed. And wouldn't you know it, the next character to activate is going to be Orko. He'll gain a power, and we need to spawn him back in. Orko has been spawned back in right here. I've also placed the HP marker back at six. And I can tell you right now that this KO certainly messed up my strategy as I thought Orko would be a lot more beneficial earlier on in the activation where he currently was. Not so much anymore. But I've got some tricks up my sleeve. I'm going to go ahead and use the power I just got from the activation row. I'm placing it in the teleport skill. So now I have two there. I'm going to spend both of them, which will increase the token for the AI controller up to 16, which is pretty insane. And we're going to go ahead and teleport. So I can do so. I basically pick a space up to four spaces away. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And then I can actually teleport Orko into a space adjacent to that if I wish. So I'm going to put him right here. And then he's going to go ahead with his second action, which will be to move because that teleport actually was an action and his next movement will just be of three which is going to take him right around the corner up here now you might have been wondering well why didn't you go this way basically i would still be four away from that scenario token either way but this way i'm on the opposite side of trouble from these wonderful enemies over here so things may still pan out depending on what happens with this activation let's find out what's going on we got the strategy card now with the strategy activation comes activating minions, but I've wiped all the minions out and no card or gameplay element has brought them back. So there's nothing to activate there, which means we now go to the AI strategy activation card, which we pull a new one, which means the empower card that was right here is now gone. So let's find out what we get going into this one. We have ambush. We start with the very top of the card and do one of these things. The first one states the controller pays five power. Well, it definitely has five power to spend, so it will drop itself all the way down to 11. All the player characters become dazed, then each player character suffers a four melee attack. Both of our characters are dazed, which means no armor bonuses for us, and also we're a little bit slower with movement now by one each. But remember, we don't have any armor on these characters yet anyway, so we're okay there. We're going to roll for a four dice attack melee against each of them. We'll start with He-Man and see how things go. Hopefully we don't see a lot of swords and a lot of castles. I don't want to see them. I got three successes against. Yikes. So He-Man just dropped from 9 down to 6, and we're going to go ahead and roll for Orko, which we hope is not bad. Let's see how we do. Ooh, got lucky. Only one success. Moving on to the next activation, Orko is going to go, gaining 2 power. 
Starting things out with Orco, I wanna get rid of that daze condition. We're gonna go ahead and spend a power and I've gone ahead right now and removed it. It was off of the main card. We're gonna remove that token as well. We're gonna take our first action and it's gonna to be to move. Now what I've done is I put myself in a position where I can use the teleport skill again. Remember I gained two power at the beginning of this activation. I placed it in the teleport skill. So I'm gonna go ahead and use teleport right now. And guess what? Why did I move first? Because now He-Man is within range four of Orco. And just to clarify, I shouldn't even use the term range because range doesn't come into it because there's no line of sight. It's just simply within four spaces. It's now time to show you just how powerful this teleport skill really is. So for two power, which I'm going to spend right now, and of course that's going to uptick the AI controller token, it's going to target one space. We have to target one within four of Orco. So where do I want to be? Well, probably somewhere safe, maybe not too close, maybe somewhere in the back here. So we'll target maybe this space right here. Then we place Orko and or any allies within four spaces of Orko. So that's going to be He-Man in this case. I can drag with me and we're going to place them into the target space or any adjacent space. So now you can see just how awesome this teleport skill really is. And in a scenario like this, it's absolutely perfect to have it as we're trying to avoid getting gummed up by the AI characters and avoid being taken out, being KO'd. So this allows us to get away quite quickly. There is one con to this, and I'm okay with taking it. It's going to be a hit against He-Man, bringing him from 6 to 5 because he was adjacent to Merman. So remember, inside the game, there is escape damage. So Merman did a nice swipe at He-Man as he was teleported to the other rune, and now, when he starts his turn, he's going to be right next to one of the scenario tokens. Now we'll move on to the next character activation. Who do we have this time? Skeletor. All the enemies are bearing down on this, and Skeletor gains two from the activation row, so he's got four power on his card. Worth mentioning, he is dazed, however, so that will slow his movement. He pulls a character activation card and gets Activate Skill. The Activate Skill card is not going to be bad for us because Skeletor has no range to any of the heroes. So it's going to skip past this first one and the second one, and it's going to move right to otherwise. So it's going to move two spaces once and then two spaces again. But because it is dazed, it'll only be one space and then one space. Now, in this case, with Skeletor moving two towards the heroes, and it's going to be trying to go after the nearest one, both of them are exactly even. They're both sitting at the back of this ruins area. They both have entrances on either side. It's equal distance all the way to Skeletor. So what do you do in this situation? You do what the AI would get the best advantage out of, and that would be to be heading to the left, as those are the tokens we'll be trying to go after. So he's going to pop himself right in front of that entrance there on his way towards the heroes. Next up is He-Man in the activation row. He gets two power. I place them right underneath his main character card for his main abilities. And I'm planning on probably healing with him. But first, before we do anything else, first action, we'll interact with that token and see what's there. We didn't find the NPC here, but we got another scenario token. So we have two of four. So the NPC is either here or here. One correction I'm going to make is something I slipped on in terms of the movement for Skeletor. If he has the power to do it, he's going to spend a power in order to get rid of that dazed condition before he actually has to move because they're going to make use of their power to make any benefits for themselves. So he would actually have moved a total of four. I'm very happy I caught that and adjusted. It's worth mentioning the AI characters, just like the hero characters, can absolutely spend power when they have it to get rid of nasty conditions like Daze, for instance. The only individuals that cannot get rid of Daze are the minions because they never gain power, so they can never spend it to get rid of a Daze condition. Use that to your advantage. And speaking of getting rid of Daze, He-Man's going to do the exact same thing. He's going to spend one power to get rid of his Daze condition. He's got one power left. He's got one more action left as well. And knowing full well that Merman is the next one to activate and he is way over there on the right, he's going to run for it. And the AI token goes up by one for that dazed power spend by He-Man. And at this point, next activation occurs. We got the controller here. It is going to be Merman and it's two power. Merman's over there on the right. Let's find out what he's doing. He's doing sudden recovery before taking their first action. The character will heal two. That's going to do absolutely nothing for Merman at full health right now. If there is an enemy in attack range, it will attack. Otherwise, the character moves two spaces towards the closest enemy, stopping when they enter attack range. So it's just going to start running. Now, the good news is that Merman only makes it to where Orko is, but isn't able to attack. So that's going to end off that character activation. He-Man has one more activation. The three power I just gained, I placed one here and two up there. It's probably not going to be shocking what I'm going to do here. I'm going to move three and we're going to interact with this token. You have got to be kidding me. The final rune is where the NPC is. We got another scenario token. We have three of them now, but the NPC is still stuck in the last rune area. 
That's gonna complete this round to play it. Now there is one thing that's bothering me. I'm not 100% certain on this. So I'm gonna play it the way I'm interpreting it, but I am going by the FAQ. So check out the Empower card in the FAQ. There's some wording tweaks there, but I think this thing I've spotted has nothing to do with the FAQ at all. It's just how this card operates, I believe. And someone can let me in the comments if I'm interpreting this wrong or not, but this one being a card that can come in and sit for an extended period of time until the next strategy activation, it's weird to me that it's mentioned twice. Like in other words, it says this card remains in play until the next, uh, it would be strategy AI activation. Do not reshuffle the controller deck until the start of the next controller activation, which it really means the AI strategy activation. So it's almost saying like, again, the card comes into play. Don't discard it until the next time the strategy card comes up. Then once it's in the discard, don't actually reshuffle the discard at the beginning of the next round until the next strategy activation. That's kind of how I'm interpreting it. I believe that's correct. Not 100% certain. And the only thing that makes sense around that is the fact there's only five strategy activation cards total. So maybe it's a way to kind of cool the card down so it doesn't come through the deck as often. Let me know in the comments below if I'm interpreting that right, but it is mentioned twice in there not to go ahead and do something until the next activation. The order phase is all set. I decided to have He-Man go first, then Orko, then He-Man, and then Orko. I've also shuffled the character activation deck, but I have not shuffled the strategy activation deck based on the empower words that were used. So now we're gonna go into this very first activation, the controller. Let's find out who it is. It appears Triclops is starting things off. Triclops is in a great position. He's right next to the rune area where the NPC has to be. Let's go over to the top of the character activation deck. And we got attack and advance. It says if there is an enemy in attack range, character performs an attack. This character needs to be right next to adjacent. So that's not going to happen. It is moving to. Moving to will place it here. Not close enough. It'll move again. So it'll use both actions to get right next to He-Man. That activation is complete. And the next activation is He-Man. He gains one power. I decided to place that extra power in his main card slot, so not on the skill cards. Right now he's got an enemy right in front of him and I'm really tempted to use his uh, green skill throw. I'm gonna go ahead and use that skill, so it's gonna cost me one to do it. I'm gonna get three dice to roll. I get to push enemies wounded by this attack up to two spaces, but Triclops does have defense. So I gotta get past that defense first to make this actually have a wound. And then of course that will allow me to push him out of the way. Let's see how we do with that. We got ourselves, wow, that is not good. We got ourselves an extra power, but we didn't get anything past his defenses. So essentially we used a power, then we gained it back. And we really, when we spent the power in the first place, just gave it to the AI controller and no damage, nothing else happened. So not so great for the first action. Second action, I might even try to do it again because what I'm trying to do is just get this guy away from me because I have a plan. I don't want him to be adjacent to me. So let's go ahead and make another attack. We'll use another one of my power. And again, that's the one that replenished just moments ago, right back in the same area. So we're gonna go ahead and spend this. This will again, give it to the token for the AI. So we're ticking that up. It's now gone up to 16, which is a crazy amount of power. That is kind of scary. We're gonna go ahead and roll three dice and hope for better results on this one. Can we get past the defense and get a wound on there? Yes, we can. And the ability on the card does state up to two spaces, so I'm not gonna push him the full two. I have a strategy in mind because I wanna avoid escape damage, so I'm just pushing him one. It's time for the next activation. Let's see what we get. This one's getting one power. It'll be Merman. This one does not sound good. It says summon reinforcements. Character moves two spaces towards the closest enemy, stopping if they enter attack range while Merman's right next to Orko, so done. Then spawn two minions adjacent to this character. They immediately activate. Then flip another action card for this character, but only resolve it one time. Well, this, my friends, is not good. So two of these wonderful hover robots have spawned adjacent to Merman. One of them is right next to me, and when it activates, it doesn't need to move, but it can certainly attack, and they are going to throw two dice at me with their whirling blades, and if it gets any kind of a castle, it rolls an additional die, which is not good. Let's see how we go here. We got ourselves one hit against Orko, so that's not good. Now, the next one is going to actually move at first, so it can actually get beside me. It'll go through its friend here to get over here to make its next attack. So we already know we're getting hit for one. Let's see how much we're getting hit for the next one. Oof, three total. So Orko just dropped from five down to two HP. Not good. And Orko is very much surrounded. So this definitely changes things. Now we're going to go ahead and flip another action card, but we only resolve it one time. Oh no, this could be really bad. It says activate skill if the character has enough power, which Merman certainly does. Merman has an insane amount. Let me count this. Four, eight, 
11 power right now that's nuts it can go ahead and do its skill it's going to do it if it's in range it certainly is in range right now so it's going to be the dazing splash which we've had before it's a nasty one so it costs one power and all enemies on or adjacent to a water token suffer one wound and become dazed but it can surge for three additional power which it will do because it has it and before resolving the above, place one water token in all enemy characters' spaces. I decided to place this Merman card on screen so you can actually see it because it's pretty crazy. So the Dazing Splash is one I did. I paid one power, then another three because it has the power to do so on this card and surged it, which allows before resolving to place one water token in all enemy character spaces. All enemy characters are these three individuals. They all have a water space underneath them now. And then it says all enemies on or adjacent to a water token suffer a wound and become dazed. So I'm really glad that I pushed this individual away because that would have had an effect on uh, He-Man but unfortunately dazed and a wound is coming to Orko. Somehow, someway Orko is down to just one health but it's not looking good as he's completely surrounded. Now the unfortunate thing about what just happened with the activation with Merman is that now on Orko's activation, I had a master plan set up and ready to go. I'd been planning for the entirety of the round so long as things panned out properly, where Orko on this activation was going to move three, and then from there was going to be in range to be able to teleport He-Man and himself over here. And then He-Man would in the future be able to go and interact with the token and we'd be on our way. That is going to not happen now because now Orko is surrounded. He has one HP. If he decides to teleport, he's taking escape damage. Teleport doesn't say that escape damage is ignored. So he'll take enough hit point damages to take him out, which means teleport's no longer an option because that character is spawning on the opposite side of the game board. And He-Man has work to do all by himself. So... Ugh, stressful. It's a very tough situation for Orko and honestly tough to decide what to do, but he does have the endless hat. So maybe if he's going to be taken out by rolling a specific die, he might be able to generate enough to actually take out an enemy at the same time. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll use endless hat. So we're going to spend one power and then another power to do a surge on it. So I can roll up to three dice. These two power going to the AI. So the AI now is up to 18 and we're going to roll those three dice. And again, different things happen dependent on what icons we get. Let's see how it goes. We got ourselves two swords and a castle. Or maybe there's a glimmer of hope because swords allow Orko to actually heal if he chooses to, which I'm definitely going to do it. So I can actually heal two for this one and heal two for this one. And then this castle here gives me a wound, but then one enemy within four spaces suffers two wounds. So I can actually take out one of the enemies. So my HP now for Orko is back to four and we took out one of the hover robots. I had Orko pay to get rid of his days, and that gives another one to the AI, so up to 19 now. Orko is then going to go ahead and use Teleport, which is going to be another two for the AI, bringing the total up to, well, way up to like 21 or something. It's way up there. And then at this point, we have gone ahead and moved. We picked the target location from where we were, one, two, three, four, right here, and then we can actually drop ourselves adjacent to it. So I put myself right here as I'm trying to get my way down here, but also be in connection with He-Man so I can bring him here in the future. Now Orko did leave a space with two adjacent enemies so the escape damage is two hits which drops him down to two health. The AI controller has a total of 21 power, which is pretty insane. So it's going to be able to pay for pretty much anything that happens at this point. Now the controller card for the next one's flipping over. It's a strategy card and another two added onto what's already here. So we'll go ahead like this. So we go ahead and activate minions if we have any. We do have one, so it's going to move, but it will not be able to attack. Now it's time to find out what fun things the strategy deck has for us. This time it's summoning of minions. The controller is going to go ahead and spend 5 power, which it easily has, so it's at 23, it'll drop down to 18. Spawn one minion adjacent to each player character, they immediately activate. Things are getting pretty tense up here, let's go ahead and make some rolls. So the first attack is going to come from the one that just spawned in right here. It's going to be 2 dice, and any swords and castles are going to be bad for me. We got 2 swords, so that is 2 hits against Orko, and guess what? Orko just got KO'd. Orko is no longer on the game board, and we've ticked up the KO die to two. We are one away from a loss. And next up, we roll for the attack against He-Man. Let's see how much is coming our way this time. We have two more. And He-Man is now down to three HP. This is getting a little bit stressful. Here's how things are looking currently. He-Man activates next, gaining two power. All right, it's time to decide where to put the power for He-Man. I'll place one here, and we're going to place one up with the throw. 
He-Man's going to go ahead and use his throw skill. This one's going to be a one power, and it's going to give me three dice. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to give an attack boost to it for another power. And that says that after this throw happens, you can push enemies wounded by this attack up to two spaces. So I'm going to target this one. Hopefully, if I wound it, it'll go back by one. It'll be adjacent to him, and then the attack boost will trigger. If he ends adjacent to another enemy, then I can make a separate ranged attack against the enemy it's adjacent to. So maybe a two-for-one situation. Let's see how we do. We're going to go ahead and roll right now for this attack right here. Hopefully we need some wounds to get through, and we got it. I wasn't thinking straight on that one because when I hit that enemy for two, it took it out. So there's nothing to push, so I don't get any kind of benefit off that. It was kind of a waste of uh, the power that I spent, but unfortunately the AI got that power. It's up to 20, and now at this point we have one more action. I should probably do something here. Now the castle gave me a power as well, so I'm going to use that power plus the one I already had in the slot for Earth Shatter. And we're going to spend two more, which again gives us to the AI controller, so that's up to 22. And this one we get the benefit of both attack boosts, so this is going to say target one space uh, within two spaces of He-Man. So boom, right here. And this attack hits all enemies in a line between He-Man and the targeted space. And then the attack boost says target a space within four spaces of He-Man instead. So I mean, uh, technically... I guess target a space within four spaces. Yeah, I mean, I guess in a way I could kind of target a whole bunch of enemies all at once. Uh, enemies in those spaces become days. So the question is, do I want to hit him or them? Probably him, I think. And, and then I can, the days will actually be a benefit because the days will actually mess with his defense of one. So let's do that. Plus I get, I, I like rolling four melee dice. That's definitely going to be potentially a good thing. Let's see how we do on this roll. Come on. All right, so we got ourselves two hits and one of them blocked by the defense. All right, so Triclops is down to five and these condition on him as well. That's going to do it. Now, in terms of a heal, I do want to heal. So I'm going to spend two of my power in the main card for He-Man as a bonus action to heal, which will bring me back up to five. And of course, with all that power spending, now the total that the AI is back up to is 24. The final controller card in the activation row has to be Skeletor, and it is. Now we're going to go ahead and give him two more power. He's got five power. Drawing the character activation card, he gets activating his skill. If the character has enough power to activate their skill and they're in range, they'll do it. He does not, and he, or I should say he has enough power, but he's not in range. So he's going to go ahead and he's going to move two spaces. So he moves two, and he's moving another two. And he's put himself right in front of the entrance. Orko, my friend, activates next, gets three power. I place all three of it in the teleport slot on his dashboard. We're going to bring his character back in at a spawn point and bring his health back up to six where he starts. At this point, if anybody on the hero side gets KO'd, we lose the game. We really need to try and get this last token. Orko decided to do a move action for three and then a teleport, spending two power, giving it to the AI controller, which is at a crazy high amount now. 20 is what the token's at, plus all the rest of that sitting there. So three would be one, two, three. The teleport is picking a spot four away. One, two, three, four. And then dropping people around it or on it. So I placed him right here. So we made a lot of headway with that one activation. We might be able to pull something off here, but I'm worried that He-Man might just get completely surrounded and taken out. New round begins, both the decks are shuffled and the controller cards have been randomly placed in their slots. The hero's order is all set now and there is one correction I need to make, the escalation track is not where it should be. So where we should be with the escalation track is any scenario token that's been taken is going to escalate this track, so that's going to be three already, but we've already had two KOs with Orko, and one of them just happened. So that would have ticked us into red territory, so we gain a power on the red skill. We have to choose it now. The moment that this skill should have been gained would have been when Orko was KO'd, which was not long ago at all. And we have two skills to pick between. I've already given the power here to the new skill. Magic Wand says when he activates each round, his skill and one other skill gain a power each. He has a reaction here after he rolls any dice, re-roll any of those dice. And then the second one for two power says after he rolls any dice, change one of those dice to any face. The other sign says counter magic. It's a reaction. It says when an enemy character or controller uses a skill or plays Plays a strategy card, roll a die on any result other than a castle, cancel its effect. The power is still spent, however. So this is actually really good and could be exactly what we want to use as we're getting very close to the end and potentially strategy and character activation cards can really cause us grief. This might be the one. I've gone ahead and chosen to take counter magic. This might be difficult because I'm really using teleport quite often, but I'm going to try my best to get up to three power in this because I think it will be useful. 
Now let's pick our skill for He-Man. The red one here gives him Battle Cat. So he replaces his miniature with the He-Man on top of Battle Cat model, which is pretty awesome. So we get that if we take this one, possibly gain an armor, which could be really beneficial seeing as his HP is at five, Orko is at six, but I don't really want to spend a lot of time healing. So maybe this is a good one. This also allows him to spend power to get move boosts, which is awesome, different amounts there. And then the reaction for two powers is when He-Man or an ally is attacked, push He-Man up to three spaces after the attack. So I could really clear things out. The opposite side says, I have the power. It says the first time He-Man activates each round, the skill gains two power. For two power in action, all enemies within two spaces suffer two wounds and become dazed. And then below, it gives you the ability to surge it. This becomes a bonus action. I'm gonna select the Battle Cat skill card and we're gonna go ahead and switch out the miniature. As we get closer to the end of the scenario, He-Man calls in the Battle Cat. The Battle Cat arrives on scene, He-Man jumps on top of it, and we head into the activation. The first card, as normal, does not get any power. Let's find out who it is. It is a strategy card. The minions will activate first one at a time. The first minion will go to the entrance space of the ruins and attack He-Man. Now it only has two dice and it's using... It only has two dice and melee is going to be what it's going for here with the castles as well being an option and it gets one but guess what the armor from the battle cat negates all of it. The next activation starts and it can only move one space it can't get any closer and so it stops right there no other attack. We now head to the AI strategy activation card. We got Ambush. This is not a good one. It's going to cost the controller five. It definitely has five. So it's going to knock the controller from 26 down to 21. All player characters become dazed. And then each player character suffers a four dice attack. Good thing I got that defense on my character. All right, we'll first go with He-Man being attacked and he does have the one armor, although Orko has no armor whatsoever. So when we do that roll, it could be a little scary. Let's go ahead with this and see what we get. Got ourselves one hit and it's blocked by defense. Next up is Orko. This could be dangerous, no defense whatsoever. Let's see how it goes. And one hit. So that's just one hit knocking him from six down to five. We got very lucky with those rolls because that attack on both those characters could have been pretty bad. Orko is going to activate next and he is going to move. Orko moves into position and he's going to now for his second action do the teleport skill. And the power I just gained went into the teleport skill which already had one which is why we can pay for it. So these two will go to the AI controller and we are teleporting. And He-Man can come along for the ride because he's within four of Orko. So we're going to go ahead and pick a target space. Well, one, two, three, four. Let's pick this one right here. Our heroes teleport into the final rune, and it's worth mentioning He-Man left a space with two enemies adjacent, so he does take escape damage. Even though he has armor, armor does not help against escape damage, so that's two hits, knocking him from five to three. That's going to do it for Orko's turn. Now we go to the next controller card. All right, let's find out who it is. It's going to get one power, and it is Skeletor. Skeletor now has a total of six power. We're going to go get a character activation card. Let's see what we got. We got attack in advance. If there is an enemy in attack range, character performs one attack on the enemy in range with the lowest HP. After the first run through the card, Skeletor needed to move to be adjacent to He-Man, so he's using the bottom portion the first time through. So moving two through his friendly unit to here. Then he's going to go back through the card again, and there is an enemy in range because he can attack someone inside the ruins as long as they're on an entrance space, and the Battle Cat is quite large and is in the entrance space, so we're going to attack as it states on his card. The attack is detailed out on the card here, and it says it's going to be a four dice roll, and then it's going to use an attack boost for sure, so it's going to cost one, and it's going to use the other one if it can as well. So it says enemies wounded by this attack become dazed, and then heal one for each wound dealt. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and uh, actually Skeletor is down to seven, and his max is eight, so he'll do all of this. So he's spending three power in order to pull this off. He's rolling four dice, and he's looking for melee results. We really want to see ranged. Let's see how this goes. Ooh, that's pretty bad. Actually, that's really, really, really bad because he just gains two power rate back. That is going to be four hits coming at He-Man. And guess what? His one armor knocks off one, but that's three going through. And that pushes He-Man from three to a KO position. And just like that, we lost the scenario. So very thematic that Skeletor was the one that ends up taking out He-Man. Pretty brutal overall. Now, if someone else had activated in terms of the enemies, like maybe Merman up here, we might have had one more turn to get some stuff done and get going. However, the next person would have been He-Man to activate. So we couldn't have, you know, interacted with the token and then teleported. Orko would have been the perfect one to have next. So I might have goofed on that. But again, plans change, right? At the beginning of every single round, you have a thought process in your head as to how things are going to go. And then the activations of the enemies and the strategy cards 
depending on when they come up, really throw wrenches into that strategy and you have to adjust. But of course, your actual set activations are already done for the heroes. So you have to kind of run with it. And uh, we did as best we could. I used teleport a lot to my advantage to get around here and get these uh, scenario tokens, which we did a good job of doing. But when it came down to it, we just did not have enough HP and these enemies were on our tail really heavy. And that, my friends, is going to wrap up the finale for Masters of the Universe, the board game, Clash for Eternia from Come On Games. Again, it's on GameFound for a reprint right now. If this interests you, links in the pinned comment and video description. As you can see, this is definitely a manageable game solo. You can absolutely enjoy this thing solo. Just be advised the fact that the scenarios, as they're currently laid out, certain ones are available for solo and not all of them. So keep that in mind. Also worth mentioning the fact that if you're not talking as you play the game, as I'm doing here while I'm filming it's much easier and much faster to run through the turns. It's also easier to keep track of the power spend and that balance of power effect that goes back to the AI controller as well as the escalation track. I kind of feel bad for missing that escalation track earlier, but it only hurt me in the end anyway in terms of not getting the skill the moment that Orko got KO'd, but really that time difference there was very, very small. So I don't think it really had a major gameplay impact whatsoever because I think it was like a maybe a turn or two from when it happened. So it wasn't too bad. But long story short, had a lot of fun with this one. I'm excited to see what comes out of the reprint by the time it closes up. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep on rolling solo.